But in those days, I hadn't made the connections yet with the textiles of Norfolk. I'm ashamed to say I knew nothing about them at all. I was captivated by the painters I knew that were working in Norfolk. But um, it's quite hard, actually, to say. And I often think it was going to um, an event at the castle where everybody was invited to wear shawls. And I thought, oh, well, I've got my great-grandmother's shawl. I should wear that. And when I was at the um, reception, somebody came up to me and said, where did you get that shawl? And I said, it's my great-grandmother's. And she said, well, do you realize what you've got? It's an Edinburgh shawl, and they are very, very rare. And I said, no. So I, it sparked it. Then, of course, I got involved with the Costume and Textile Association, and I was privileged to get to know Pamela Clabin very, very well. She became one of my dearest friends. And because she was a wonderful teacher, it was like a fire suddenly bursting, because there it all was, the passion. Pamela in the 60s had been the curator at Strangers Hall, the assistant curator at Strangers Hall. She was a textile person. She had uh, had her own business making clothes. She was an army nurse during the war, which showed when she swore. And um, she was selected for this job. She interviewed very badly, apparently, but she got the job. She started researching, and of course, Clabin is the great name, one of the great names in shawl making. And people were bringing her shawls and saying, well, what is this? It's something we've had in the family. Can you, and she didn't know anything about them, but she started researching. And then I became involved with her research. And at some stage, both of us went through the entire collection in the uh, Shah Hall at the moment to um, identify the different Norwich, Indian, Paisley, Scottish, not French. <laughs>